The two things I do want to talk about today um, are, the, I think, the great partnerships we've had with AIM, uh, on both on health care and on energy. And let me um, start with energy. Uh, clearly a cost driver, uh, particularly in New England. Uh, we have tough winters here, as you know, except for last year, but that's, that's, that won't be repeated. And the idea that um, New England is a great place to live um, is still true, but we find it's more and more competitive for companies who want to grow here, uh, who want to come here. Uh, and the choices, particularly since so many businesses are actively being recruited in other parts of the states with a lot of incentives, means that we, to stay competitive, have to take every advantage that we can. And that, to me, means staying on top of what we can do to make our energy policies, our practices, uh, as cost effective as they can be. And I know that uh, AIM, it's a huge issue for AIM, obviously. I've had the opportunity to, to visit around Massachusetts um, many of our uh, businesses. And, and when you look at some of the larger businesses who are huge consumers of energy, and you realize that when their bill goes up by one penny per kilowatt hour, that costs them millions of dollars a year, that comes home, that this is a huge, important issue that we need to do better on. Um, but statutorily, our office are the ratepayer advocates, and we have taken that seriously. We've saved Massachusetts ratepayers over $600 million since we came in, and we are committed to continue to do that. Uh, the irony of this, of course, was I love my time as district attorney. Someone asked me how did I go into law school at lunch, and I said Perry Mason. And I come from the background of prosecuting cases and trial work. And someone said to me, you should run for attorney general. And I said, you'll have to do utility. I'd have to do utility rate regulation. Why would I want to do that? But it is incredibly important, and we take it seriously. And in fact, we've been able to move beyond just the particular rate regulation issue. It's about much more than just is this particular rate increase justified, but it is about how are we going to have a consistent and effective policy moving forward to make sure that you can afford energy, you can afford to stay here, you can afford to grow here in Massachusetts. So we work on promoting two policies, particularly in light of the Green Communities Act. Um, so passed in 2008, I supported it, I support it still. But I think as we move forward, we want to keep two things in mind. It's incredibly important that we develop clean energy. We have the resources, we have the intellectual ability, we have the innovation here in Massachusetts to be able to do that. And we should, uh, and we will be committed to that. But we also have to keep an eye on keeping those energy costs down for ratepayers. And so as a result of several things, uh, since that bill was passed, a tough economy, less, fewer federal dollars that would help us pay for it, and some learning about what it really costs as we move forward to cleaner energy. Um, we have uh, looked at some projections to say over the next four years, the Commonwealth's renewable energy efficiency programs may cost in excess of $4 billion. That would be between 2012 and 2015. Now, those same projections say that if we do that right, the programs will have the potential to save us up to $9 billion over the next 10 years. If that projected payout is accurate, then that seems like a sound investment. But in the meantime, we have to make sure that the data is accurate, that we are moving forward in a way that is cost effective and more transparent. So we know that it's a sound investment, and frankly, we know whose investment it really is and who will get the return on it, all important questions. And as a result of that, we've made um, three changes, three suggestions for changes that we think are important for the Green Communities Act. One, we should ensure that we procure long-term renewable contracts exclusively through a competitive process. We believe in competition. We think it's important. We think that people are at their best when they compete. Um, secondly, we believe, and we've said this, we need to eliminate overly generous sweetheart incentives and that we pay our utilities to manage these programs. And third, we believe that renewable development should be done on a technology-neutral basis, absent a compelling need to ensure investment in a particular technology. And I think this will ensure that ratepayers will back the least cost renewable projects. Um, we have worked with uh, AIM and with Senate President uh, Therese Murray, with um, Senator Ben Downing, and in a common sense approach, I think uh, they have em embraced these improvements along with a voluntary energy efficiency pilot program for large commercial and industrial customers and trying to close some loopholes in the Department of Public Utilities merger oversight. So I continue 
uh, to look forward to working with the legislature, important issues, complicated issues. Uh, I know they're probably the things that put you to sleep after a nice lunch on Friday, particularly those of you who did have a drink, and so I apologize for that. Um, but it is um, incredibly important. I want to really thank Bob Rio, who's been a, a, a key point person on this. And just as I said, utility rate regulation, there, there are very few things that are more important um, and, and is complicated. I just want to men mention one quick thing that we're also trying to do that may make it a little more transparent. Along the lines of what I just said, we also recognize that this is an industry and the, the, the way it works and the way you pay your bills is particularly non-transparent. Um, who in this room actually knows what your energy bill says or what it's about? Anybody read it? for your businesses or residential? It's, it's like getting the rosette. Yeah, I, I, so I, I hope a couple people would be able to, but it's, it's pretty confusing when you look at that bill, and it's like the rose, you need a Rosetta Stone to figure out what it's talking about. But in an effort to provide more consistency and transparency, we are working with the Department um, of Energy and the DPU, Department of Public Utilities, to try and establish two things, a universal method to track utility bill rates as well as making the data available to the public in a user-friendly format. Um, that's politicians speak for saying people understand what it means. And the user-friendly format is not what bills are now, and it makes it very difficult to try and accomplish those other goals that we have. But we are committed to doing it, the hard work to just get down to basics, um, and we can make some real changes moving forward, I think. Uh, in a section of the country with high energy bills, uh, we're committed to doing better.